If you have forearm pain, in this video you're going to learn why you shouldn't stretch and three exercises to relieve that pain for good. Hey, it's Coach E from Precision Movement and today I'm going to help you deal with forearm pain. Whether that pain is in the front, in the flexors, in the top, the brachioradialis, or in the extensors of the forearm, we're going to learn three exercises, three unique exercises that will help you to resolve this pain so that you can get back to the things you love doing. Now, why do we get this pain in the first place? There are two main reasons, two main culprits. One is desk work and computers and phones. When we're doing that stuff, we're often in the flexed wrist position and we're overusing the flexors of the forearm. So those muscles can get overworked and painful that way. Number two is if you're a gym rat and you're grabbing those barbells, dumbbells, the chin-up bar, or you play a sport like tennis, baseball, golf, something that where you're gripping, those muscles are gonna be a lot stronger and you can have an imbalance between the flexors and extensors and an imbalance between the ranges of motion at the wrist. So we're gonna learn how to restore that right now. The most common advice that you'll hear to deal with this pain is the standard wrist stretch that looks like this for the flexors or like that for the extensors. And we don't recommend that at all for this type of pain. And there's two reasons why. Number one is if you've got, let's say, scar tissue or adhesions between muscles or between muscles and fascia that is preventing proper tissue pliability, when you just do a simple stretch like this, what you're gonna stretch through is the already pliable tissue. That scar tissue, that knot is gonna stay there because it's already tight, it's strong, and it's not gonna get pulled apart from this type of stretch. Number two, is if you've got pain because of micro damage in the muscles or the tendons, then if you do a static stretch like this, that tissue is already extra pliable. It's already damaged, so it's not as strong. You're just gonna pull through that tissue even more. So you're gonna create more damage. So the techniques that we're gonna go through today will not have those negative effects and will have other positive effects like increasing strength, increasing range of motion, and improving tissue pliability without the, the negative side effects. The other thing that's often missing is the movements of the forearm of pronation and supination. So pronation is when you turn your palm down, supination is when you turn your palm up. Pronation, supination. If these movements are lacking, you're gonna overuse some of the muscles. That means that some muscles aren't working properly and you're not working through a full range of motion. So some other muscles are gonna be overworking, again, resulting in wear and tear and pain. So we're gonna resolve all those issues with the three exercises that I'm gonna show you right now. The first one is what we like to replace static stretching with, and that's active self myofascial release. And you wanna work this tissue. It's basically like giving yourself a massage with an active component. So if you've ever had active release techniques, this is just you doing it to yourself. We wanna work the three areas, the flexors, the brachioradialis, and the extensors, and we wanna work kind of in between those tissues as well. So to start off, we'll do the flexors. For the flexors, you start with the flexed wrist, and then you can just work anywhere around here to start, and you extend the wrist as you slide your thumb up with significant amount of pressure, and then you repeat. So you're gonna repeat for about a minute or so, 45 seconds to a minute, just keep working different areas of the flexors right into the elbow, go right up to the bicep. You can start at the hand and go right across the wrist. You're just working all the flexor muscles around this forearm and elbow and wrist. So you do that. Number two, brachioradialis. That's this muscle right here, it can often get painful. So we wanna work between the flexors and the brachioradialis to start. So again, you start in flexion of the wrist and then work right up and around there. And then you can go right on top of the brachioradialis and notice how I'm flexing and then extending my elbow. That's because the brachioradialis is a flexor of the elbow. So here we're gonna lengthen that tissue and release it. So you can see if there's any scar tissue going right over that, we can help break that up. And when you add the active component, that makes it that much more effective. So then you work on the top side, the brachioradialis between the wrist extensors. So you're just working 
again, 45 seconds to a minute in that area. And then you want to work the extensors. When you work the extensors of the forearm, which are around here, they go onto the lateral epicondyle, the outside elbow part, elbow bony part. You start with wrist extension. So you start with an extended wrist now, and then you flex the wrist as you work right up until that lateral epicondyle, the bone on the outside of the elbow. And this is just because we want to go from a shortened muscle position to a lengthened muscle position. And when we do that, we can effectively release these tissues. Again, 45 seconds to a minute. So once you've done that, your tissues have been released. Maybe you've broken up some knots, some scar tissue, whatever it is that's reducing your tissue pliability and quality. Once we've done that, we want to activate those muscles now. And we're going to do that with what I call the flexed fist extended flare elbow car. So this technique, we do the two positions of the hand and the fingers and the wrist. One is the flex fist. So we'll start there. So flex fist is flexion of the wrist and then make a fist. And make sure you've got kind of even pressure through all the fingers when you make that fist. You're not kind of using more one side, like the pinky side than the other or the index finger side than the other. It's even fist, but you're not gripping and trying to crush something to death. Just a moderately gripped fist with the flexed wrist. Starting, good shoulder position, shoulders back, good posture, elbow straight. And you're just gonna do like a bicep curl type of movement. Flex the elbows, and then you're gonna rotate as far around as you can, keeping that flexed fist, and then you're gonna extend the elbows. Then you come back, rotate it back, and then extend the elbows, and you keep repeating that. And you can do all the flex fist position first if you want, that's fine. Like I'm showing you here, just go back and forth. Make sure you keep that flexed wrist and you fully straighten the elbows out. Because the other benefit here is you're gonna lengthen and mobilize the nerves. So you go back and forth. If you're gonna do that all at once, do three repetitions of the flexed fist version. Like that. Now we do the extended flare, and that is extend the wrist, flare the fingers apart and make sure the fingers are straight. We start with our arms by our side, same thing, good posture, good shoulder posture, good spine posture, chin tucked, and then you bend the elbows, rotate fully, and then extend the elbows, keeping that extended flare. And then you turn, flex the elbow, rotate back, and fully extend the elbows. So we can do this three repetitions, or if you wanna alternate them, you can. It's up to you and do that for two sets. So two sets, three repetitions of each of those hand positions. And what this is gonna do is gonna strengthen the muscles in through their full range of motion. So fully flexed fist is gonna shorten the flexors here and it's gonna fully lengthen the extensors. Whereas extended flare is gonna fully lengthen the flexors and shorten the extensors. Because these muscles cross all the way from the fingers and across the elbow, when we do these two positions of the hands and the fingers, that's how we can work through that full range of motion. So it's very unique in that way. And that's how you're gonna restore that full length and strength. The last exercise we're gonna go through is called the wrist extension, ERE. That stands for end range expansion. And that's to restore both the range of motion of wrist extension and the strength of the wrist extensors. So it's not just stretching, but we're getting that extra range of motion by building strength in this range of motion so that your brain knows that you're strong, you're stable there, and allows you to keep that range of motion. For this technique, get into the four point position. And from here, you're gonna go into a very, very, very slight passive stretch. Elbow stays straight the whole time. So right there, I'm in a slight passive stretch. And then what I'm trying to do is I'm lifting with the wrist extensors, my hand and my fingers off the ground, keeping the elbow straight, holding that, for 10 to 15 seconds or one to two slow breaths. And the key here is activating these muscles, firing them up so I'm working them, building their strength. Now, once you're done, keep those muscles on, put the hand on the floor by rocking your body forward and then change to press the hand and the fingers into the floor, firing the wrist flexors. So I'm building strength in those muscles now at this range of motion. Elbow stays straight, 
Again, 10 to 15 seconds or one to two slow breaths. And you finish off with wrist extension again. Back up a little bit and lift that hand off the ground. Fingers are straight, fingers are flared. Elbows straight. Breathing and working those muscles. You're gonna feel it. Make sure you're working all, all through the hand evenly, not just one side or the other, not just thumb side or pinky side. And once you're done, gradually let everything go. You're gonna feel that working. And there's often an imbalance between the strength of the flexors, like I said, in the gym, in sport, we're always grabbing things, in life, we're always grabbing things, and we're not doing the opposite. So we're restoring the balance of strength and range of motion at the wrist and in those forearm muscles, and that's gonna help with your painful forearms. Those are the three exercises that are gonna help with your forearm pain. And I wanted to go through a couple of quick tips of things that I've seen countless times in people that prolongs forearm pain. And number one is when you're doing pull-ups and chin-ups, make sure you grab the bar with either a neutral wrist or a slightly extended wrist. A lot of people grab it with a flexed wrist and that's gonna overuse those flexor muscles again and overuse this range that we're already using too much and cause that excess stress on the forearm muscles. So that's the first tip. The second tip is grabbing weights. If you're grabbing weights, make sure you grab them with a full grip on the dumbbell or the barbell, not the weight, the bar hanging from your fingertips, especially not hanging from maybe two or three fingers and not your whole hand. So grab that weight with a proper grip with the full hand and that's going to do go a long way to preventing forearm pain from gym activities there you have exercises and tips to deal with forearm pain if you liked it hit the like button if you haven't subscribed yet subscribe and join the others who follow us to move freely and without pain and make sure you check out these other two videos here that can help you with new exercises and strategies to build up the strength and range of the elbows and the wrists. And the absolute best option is to check out the Elbow Pain Solution. Get on the wait list if it's not out yet because we're building it right now. And that's gonna walk you through exercises like this and strategies like this and more.